Is the Second Amendment just for muskets? You might be asking yourself if you're an idiot. So we've heard the argument countless times from gun control advocates. I think the Second Amendment is in the Constitution so that we can have muskets when uh, the British people come over in 1800. We used to have those guns when we were, you know, back in the day when you needed to go hunt and everything like that. You don't need those guns nowadays. Again, the argument here is that the Second Amendment exists so Americans can overthrow the government. Uh, that is a view. It is, it is a radical view. Well, this is what they had in mind when they wrote the Second Amendment, a single shot firearm that takes a bit of work to reload. The problem is that they're dead wrong. It's wrong. It's wrong. We'll get to all of the pre-Constitution assault weapons that already existed in a second, but firstly, to accept this premise, you would have to believe that the Founding Fathers were so stupid they had never, ever, ever witnessed nor anticipated any kind of technological advancement in weaponry whatsoever. The right to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. What if guns get, like, way bigger than today? Well, I hadn't thought about that. Believe it or not, weapons have evolved since the beginning of mankind. Rocks became sharper rocks. Sharper rocks became clubs. Clubs became swords. Swords became guns, etc., etc. Also, quick irony alert, many of the filthy hipsters trying to take away your Second Amendment rights are doing so by exercising their First Amendment right written long before their iPhones. Send. But finally, the good stuff, the gun. Turns out by the time the Second Amendment was written, many assault weapons already existed. Take the Belt and Flintlocks, for instance, which was created during the Revolutionary War and can fire 20 or so rounds in the pull of one trigger in about five seconds. Or the Girondoni Air Rifle, where a 22 high capacity round magazine could be fired in about 30 seconds. Again, this was created during the Revolutionary War and was actually later used by Thomas Jefferson to famously outfit the Lewis and Clark expedition. No, Lewis and Clark. Now, Shannon, there's your musket cleaned. Now you clean mine. Or even the Puckle Gun, an early Gatling gun that was developed over 60 years before the Revolutionary War. Heck, even the Pepper Box revolvers could hold over 20 rounds and were developed hundreds of years before the Constitution. By the way, not only were the Founding Fathers aware of these guns, they were fans for crying out loud. And the Second Amendment didn't just apply to guns, but full-on artillery. Here's a letter of mark and reprisal signed by President Madison for a privately owned ship carrying cannons that was authorized to attack enemy shipping. These were not muskets, and the Founding Fathers didn't give no craps. They were the action heroes of their day. Go ahead. Make my day. Your disease, and I'm the cure. Hasta la vista, baby. It's time to party. Tea party. The most important takeaway here is contrary to popular opinion, even though the Second Amendment was written to literally include all weapons, the more you dive into it and understand its historical context, the more you see that the Founding Fathers expressly wrote it to include technologically advanced effective weaponry. So anytime a silly leftist tries to feed you the argument of how the Second Amendment was for muskets, send them this video because it's done. It's over now. End of debate. Stop trying to misinform America, you filthy hippies. I'm just up, you red if you like this video, subscribe or watch my previous installment on the Second Amendment. If you do these things, I won't shoot you. If you like this video, subscribe. If you like this video, so.